Welcome, my constant reader friends. I'm Tad, and this is Tad Reads Books and Stuff. All right, so this is my regularly scheduled uh, time period for my book tube. Uh, I did release a video yesterday. Please go check that out. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But so basically, I'm going to do a quick update, and then we are finally going to get to talk to talk about <laughs> Persepolis Rising. Book seven in the Expanse series. So first off, real quick, I I went picking yesterday. Uh, when I go picking, I kind of just pick an area on the map and I search for different thrift shops in that area. And I just go there and I go to the thrift stores. When I go to the thrift store, I'm looking for basically books, you know, and uh, records. So I went, picked an area over by the villages. I figured, boy, there's a lot of retirees over there. Maybe they're getting rid of some books and maybe some old records and stuff. So my girlfriend and I took the day, went over to the villages area and went to a couple thrift stores. Went to, th to four, I believe four thrift stores. And I mean, let me tell you something. There must be a lot of other people going around doing this picking stuff because there was nothing there. I found one book, which is, is a good one for, for me. And I found two records. Both of them I was very surprised to find and would have been great finds until I actually pulled the record out of the sleeve and looked at them and they were trashed. I mean, just completely scratched up, like someone purposely destroyed these these records. It was a shame. So I got one thing, but I got Cormac McCarthy, The Road. Nice, hardcover, clean, used book. Looks great. This is perfect for me because one of my viewers one of my subscribers had asked if I would be interested in reading and reviewing The Road by Cormac McCarthy and, of course, No Country for Old Men. And I have not ever read any Cormac McCarthy, if you can believe that. So definitely I'm, I'm on board with that. So luckily I found The Road. I still have I've gone online looking for No Country for Old Men. I like hardbacks, if at all possible. The prices for those are ridiculous right now. Um, I just got lucky and found the road. So next month we will be doing the road. So that, that's going to be on next month's TBR. That was a good find, but that's all I found. In four thrift stores, that's it. No other books, no other records, nothing. Kind of disappointing. All right. Where are we standing right now so far in February? We're already in February. I have not started reading this yet. This is, is another planned TBR for February. Haven't started that yet. And of course, have not started uh, Tiamat's Wrath yet. This is book eight in the Expanse series. But those two books will be done this month. I have started my Stephen King compilation, short story compilation reading project. Um, different seasons. I have read, uh, I finished the first story in here. Of course, there's four stories. And I read um, Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption. Uh, very good. I haven't done any updates on that yet on my channels. Uh, Apt Pupil is the next story in this book. So that's that's next up. And I what did I finish? I did finish Saga. This first um, book, book one of this series, uh, this book has 18 uh, issues of the 18 issues of the comic book. The first 18 issues, book one. This is done as you see. Uh, I'm doing this as a read along with Graz on the JK. Uh, G. Wow, man! You, use your use your words, Ted. I'm doing this as a read-along with Graz on the GKBC, and I just put that video up yesterday. 
So please check that out. That's just a little side project I'm doing with Graz. So that's done. And we'll be starting reading the next six issues of the comic series in book two of Saga. So we're doing the updates of these every two weeks, Graz and I. So please check out his channel uh, for his review of the last six. All right. So that's... I always have a stack of books with me. What, what is up with that? Always got a stack of books going somewhere. All right, so let's get down to it. Persepolis Rising. This is book seven of, of course, the Expanse uh, series. This one was published in December of 2017. My version has 549 pages. And on Goodreads right now, this book is rated 4.37, which is really pretty good. So let's talk about that. Now, real quick, I, I made a mistake. I've been, you know, I've been reading along with the short stories that accompany each book as we go. So I read Auberon, which was the next one. And then I, I when I'm doing some research on the numbers, I find out that Auberon is actually uh, 8.5. So that story is actually after the eighth book, uh, which we're reading this month. So I'm not going to talk about Auburn today. I should have known. I mean, it was a little disjointed when I was reading it and I'm like, you know what, what, this really doesn't go exactly, but it's still in the same. Anyways, we're, we're not talking about Auburn today. Sorry. Let's get back <laughs> just to Persepolis Rising. All right. So in Persepolis Rising, if you've been reading along or if you've read this series, you'll realize uh, that this takes place 30 years, three decades after, again, I got a stack of books, uh, book six, which was Babylon's Ashes. So 30 years from the end of this book to the beginning of Persepolis Rising. All right, so... I have to be honest, if you saw my review of Babylon's Ashes, I did mention, talk about a little bit that they really could have ended the series there. Not really like books one through three were a trilogy and four through six were a trilogy. They all kind of blended together. Now, yes, they did advance the... the the story and it went into different story lines, but still relevant, of course, to the ones before it. But I really felt that they could have ended the series at the end of book six and they would have been just fine. They did not. They went on to book seven and book seven is 30 years in the future from Babylon's Ashes. Now, why, why is that? I'm not saying that that necessarily is a problem, but it kind of was for me at first anyways, because, oh, man, I'm going to say probably like the first good 100, 100, almost 150 pages of this book, um, I was just like, I was not digging it. It, it wasn't, it wasn't the old gang but it was the old gang. I mean, 30 years, you, you think a lot of, of stuff is going to change. It does in the universe. And of course, in their ages, they're, they're much older now, of course, everyone. But the characterization of the individual characters really didn't change that much. Um, I have seen that in other people's, uh, I've read it in other reviews, that that People didn't, that's pretty much the, the thing that people didn't like most about this Persepolis Rising was that the characters, it's 30 years and they really haven't changed. They're the same old Holden, the same old Amos. Even Alex, who in this 30 year time period, um, got married, had a kid and got a divorce. Really didn't change that much. 
even though he had all these life experiences and, and his kid is now like 18 or something going going to getting ready to go to college so i mean i can understand and that for me too i, I didn't like how they they started this novel it basically was them naomi and holden sitting around saying you know what we're getting freaking old it's about time we retire so they pretty much they fly to medina station and that's where they figure that they're going to retire they're going to start their retirement there and move to you know a beach on an island on a beach on a planet somewhere you know the retirement dream of everybody they tell everyone on the Rasanti, the whole the whole crew, they're all together still, and pretty much the crew is like, okay, no big deal. All right, who's going to be the new captain? And of course, Holden and Naomi determine that really it should go to Bobby. Bobby should be the new captain of the Rasanti, and that's what happens. They go to Medina Station. She takes over the ship, and right then I'm just kind of like, oh man. You've read six books in this series with these people, and you know there's three more. You think it's going to be more high seas adventure with the crew of the Rasnade, and it's really kind of just depressing to begin with in this book. Now, the good thing is, right about that point, that's when the shit hits the fan and stuff starts happening. So, of course, Medina Station is uh, located right, right near one of the uh, rings. And the ship comes through the ring, and it's like no other ship they've ever seen before. It's huge. It's very much like one of my favorite um, TV series of all time, Babylon 5. The Vorlons in Babylon 5, their ships were kind of uh, organic. And you can see that this ship is, is different, and it's almost like it has skin. What happened was Winston Duarte, yes, a name from the past, a general in the Martian army, has, he basically, about a third, I think it was, of the Martian army defected and went through the ring and founded this other society on another world they're calling Laconia. So they're all Laconians now. Winston Duarte is their supreme leader. And these people have found a way. Again, this goes back to stealing the protomolecule. Studying the protomolecule and integrating it into a ship. And it's amazing. These guys are going to come and... Winston Duarte, of course, is a narcissistic, uh, crazy man that thinks that he, it's his responsibility to take all humans, now in, in all these thousands of worlds now, and conquer them all and bring them into one family where he's the supreme leader and he's going to run humanity the way it always should have been run. Earth is pretty much a husk, a shell of itself. Since Marco dropped, you know, the rocks on Earth and almost destroyed Earth. Um, so they're not putting up much of a fight. Of course, we see Drummond, again, another character, you know, from the other books. She is now the leader of the transport uh, society, uh, association that governs pretty much the soul system, Earth and Mars. And, and they're trying to put their finger on everybody, all the other colonial planets and all the different ring gates and different solar systems. It's just that you're talking about old politics, you know, just regular old politics stuff. But Winston is going to take that over and show people a utopian society that's perfect and beautiful and where everyone thrives and but the way he's going to do that is by putting his thumb down and destroying anybody who stands in his way and he's got this crazy ship possibly a fleet but we really don't see it supposedly other ships are coming but yeah he goes he comes into the gate by medina station 
immediately takes over Medina Station. That throws everybody into a tizzy. Even Naomi Hunt, Holden, who are retired now. Bobby doesn't know. They impound the Rosante. It, it just goes crazy. We do see some new characters. Um, Captain Singh, who basically becomes the head now of Medina Station. And he kind of has to put his thumb down on Medina Station. And you see some things that happen. I don't want to give a lot of way, of course. Um, but so, so that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at um, an invasion of the soul, solar system and all other solar systems by this Winston Duarte. And um, we find out, though, that actually Winston was the dude that really was financing or behind uh, Marco and the Free Navy and, you know, their whole war against Earth and Mars. So that's where we stand. Some crazy stuff happened. We do see now some characterizations with the relationship now of the remaining people, the Rosinante. Bobby's in charge, so now she's, you know, she's captain. She's going to have her own way of doing things. She gets in a huge fight with Amos. They almost kill each other. Her relationship with Alex is amazing. When Alex got married, Bobby was his best man. Um, interesting things like that. Of course, uh, Peaches, Clarissa, is her health is declining rapidly. She's about ready to split. Um, a lot of things really start happening, but it took 150 pages. After that, though, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait to see what happens next. I do think it's almost a separate trilogy that they could have done. You know, um, instead of saying like book seven, eight, and nine, you know, different different writers have, you know, a trilogy. And then they'll do 20, you know, 100 years later, a trilogy. It was. It's more kind of like that, I think. And it is a change a little bit in perspective because we almost see almost none of uh, of Holden. We almost see nothing of Holden and where he pretty much le leads the perspective in all the other prior books. He's almost not here at all. He does eventually, though, go on a ship to Laconia. So is that what book eight and nine is? Are they going to do a rescue mission to go save Holden? I don't know. Did, did, is the Rocinante, did they get away from Medina Station and, and, uh, you know, the Laconians now taking over? It's very, it did get very interesting. And now I'm back in it. I definitely, I gave it a four on my Goodreads. So I did enjoy it. Absolutely. Can't wait to start book eight. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions about this series, please give me some questions. Uh, I, I, I'm digging it still and we're I'm seven books in. So, I mean, it's, it's not perfect. It's up and down, you know, nothing is, but I, I ended up really enjoying it. So anyways, that's it for Sepulus Rising. We're going to be hitting, um, Tiamat's War next saga, finish up Stephen King. It never ends and hopefully it never ends. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you found any entertaining value in this video, please like, subscribe, and give me plenty of comments. And as usual, peace out.